Yo, how is it going, Bears fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Bear Down Podcast, where we talk everything Chicago Bears every day of the week. I'm your host, Chris, and today I'm going to be giving you guys my thoughts on the Bears' 8-8 eight eight finish to the season. My first video in about a month back, and I would like to say before I start this one off, I would like to apologize. I'm a little bit sick, so if I sound a bit stuffy or if I'm a little bit congested, that is my fault. I'm sorry about that. But let's just hop right into it. This video is going to be pretty blunt. And also, it's going to preview a, a lot of my thoughts for the offseason and moves this team needs to make moving forward to get back to winning ways because I truly think the Bears can definitely do that. Long story short, it's been a while since I last made a video. I think about a month, if I'm actually going to pull it up on my phone here. Yeah, Breaking Down Bears versus Packers with Nicholas Moriano was our last video. And that's where we were. The, that's the video where we were getting hopeful after the Bears beat the Cowboys, that they could go beat the Packers, that they could go beat the Chiefs, and that they could go beat the Vikings. Obviously, none of that did happen, except for the win over the Vikings when the Vikings had backups in. But it, it's just crazy looking back on it now how the season ended. Everything happened that would have happened for the Bears to need to make the playoffs, except for the Bears holding up their end. If the Bears found a way to beat Green Bay... Maybe they would have had some more momentum going into that Chiefs game. I was at that Chiefs game at home. I was home from uh, college on winter break, and that was a tough one to be at. But you never know. I mean, the Bears, when I said it a couple, like uh, six weeks ago, that they controlled their own fate, I really believed that they controlled their own fate. And people were saying, no way they don't. They're relying on too many other teams to win. And I thought everything was going to fall into place, and it absolutely did. And the Bears ended up controlling their own fate, and they could not pull through. It's unfortunate, you know, this might be a little bit of a short podcast, but I would like to say that this team absolutely has the pieces to get back to their winning ways. The season was a letdown for everyone. It was tough to see Trubisky take a, take a basically a, a giant step back in year three. It was tough to see Nagy get too cute with the play and calling with the lead and being too conservative coming into games and throwing screen passes and, and all these little dump offs. That, that was really tough to see as well. Well, I definitely think there are a few moves that need to be me- that need to be made this offseason to put us in a better place. I truly believe that the Bears core is still young and can definitely be successful in the future. I would have gotten a video out on this earlier, but I didn't have time as I was moving back into school. I'm starting to take classes again and have a lot going on. I'm about to rush a fraternity for the first time in my life, and there's a lot of stuff going on, and my college tennis season is about to start up soon. One part of my offseason plan that I would have discussed a couple weeks ago is that I think the offensive staff needs to get flipped up, and that actually has already happened. We saw the Bears try and hire Pat Shermer. While that didn't happen, they ended up with Bill Lazor. I think it's Lazor Lazor at offensive coordinator. A lot of people judging that move and heavily scrutinizing the Bears for it. All I'm going to say on that one is I think you have to give this guy a chance and see what he can do before really judging him. He's got a past where he's been successful with some quarterbacks. He had he he would have had I think he really would have had good years with Andy Dalton that had the Bengals not been so banged up on the offensive line if AJ Green were healthy. But Laser had his best year with Ryan Tannehill, except for this year where Tannehill obviously is about to get one of the biggest contract extensions. Playing great as the Titans are in the AFC championship. But his last back his last best year was in twenty fourteen back in Miami, and Laser was his offensive coordinator then, and then in the season when Nick Foles threw 27 touchdowns and two interceptions, uh, I think Laser was either his quarterback coach or his offensive coordinator. I haven't really looked into it, but that's promising, and you know that he can work well with a quarterback. The next hiring that I liked a lot was the addition of John DeFilippo. So this is an interesting one. He was a guy that the Bears were looking to hire as head coach possibly a couple years down the road was just the Jaguars' offensive coordinator got fired, and they're going to hire him as their new quarterback's coach and move Dave Rago into passing game coordinator. So, Filippo will be working directly with Trubisky and whoever Trubisky's possible and definitely likely competition is. Finally, actually no, there's two more moves. The next one we've got is Juan Castillo as the new offensive line coach and run game coordinator. That's an interesting one. He's worked with some successful linemen throughout his his time in the NFL in Buffalo and also especially in Baltimore. They have some really good linemen down there. Marshall Yon is one uh, that I like a lot that has been down there. And then finally, um, veteran assistant 
Clancy Barone has been hired as the Bears tight end coach. Long story short, I think the Bears did a great job at flipping this staff around. While it is interesting that a lot of these guys have been out of football for a year, Castillo, Barone, and um, Laser have all been out of the game for a year. And that's going to be really interesting to see how that plays out. I will say, I know they're all going to come in and be motivated that they want to get this team back on track. They're all coming in, even though Laser isn't even calling the plays. I think everyone on this new offensive staff, especially DiFilippo, knows that they have a really, really big part in turning this team around. The offense was 29th ranked in the league, and we want to get back to winning ways. Now, I will say, I think now with the hiring of DiFilippo, I think there really are no excuses for Mitchell Trubisky now. He's had some great success with quarterbacks, especially in Philadelphia with Carson Wentz and Nick Foles. And Trubisky's on really thin ice. I do think the Bears are going to bring in some sort of competition for him this offseason. I'll get into it more in other videos and other podcasts. But Trubisky's on thin ice. He's got a really good quarterbacks coach now. And I like the place that the core that we put together for him on the offensive side of the ball. I'll definitely get into more details on free agency and draft in future videos, but the offensive needs for me are pretty simple and easy. You got to patch up the offensive line. You have to really look deep at yourself and consider what am I going to do with Leno and Massey. Massey was okay last year. Leno was was not really good at all after making the Pro Bowl in 2018. 2019 was an absolute flip year for him. I think he might have had the most holds in the league or was up there in penalty yards, and it's it's never something we would have seen coming. It's unfortunate because we just signed him to an extension, but this offensive line has to get completely completely dug up. Um, also losing Kyle Long's huge. I'm going to miss Kyle Long a lot. That's that's a pretty big loss. So patching up the O-line is going to be my number one need for the offseason after this 8-8 eight eight season to get us back on track. Number two. Bring in legitimate competition at QB1. Someone that a lot of people liked coming into this offseason was Marcus Mariota. Now, that isn't going to happen because uh, Brad Biggs, a couple of days ago, the Chicago Tribune reported that he sees no way that would happen considering Trubisky and Mariota are both on the same agency. And why would an agency who views both their quarterbacks as deserved starters try and pit their players against one another? So I don't think that would happen unless Chicago's Mariota's last destination, and he couldn't go anywhere else. But there's some interesting options. I mean, you got to look at at guys like Teddy Bridgewater. You don't. I don't really think that's going to happen personally. Someone I think is an interesting option is Andy Dalton from the Cincinnati Bengals. Now that we have Laser, who is his offensive coordinator for two years, he could come in here and learn that offense pretty quickly. And without a doubt, Dalton might be the most average quarterback in the league, but without a doubt is more talented than Trubisky. He's got five playoff appearances now. I don't think he's ever won a playoff game, but he's shown that he can win with teams, and those are some pretty busted-up teams, you know. I think the Bears have more talent now than the Bengals ever had in the playoffs on the offensive and defensive side of the balls, so or of the ball. So I think I think Dalton could be in a really interesting situation, and I think it's definitely the most realistic situation um, coming into Chicago. Now, finally, my last need and on offense there's a little bit of wide receiver discrepancy I'm not going to worry about that for now it's just my last need is just getting some more solidified tight ends on the roster who can stay healthy uh there's going to be a lot of options this offseason in free agency one that a lot of Bears fans like a lot is Eric Ebron uh I've posted on my fan page about a couple of other ones as well you've got Austin Hooper who might be a little expensive one that I like a lot is Tyler Eifert if he can stay healthy he played 16 games in 2019 for the first time since 2015, he's played 12-plus games. And then Darren Fells is another one. He's 33 years old. <coughs> but is an intriguing option as well. As far as defense goes this offseason, I really think the Bears need to find one more pass rusher, and I think they're committed to doing that. Uh, it's one more, They got one more year on Leonard Floyd's uh, contract. Should be interesting to see what happens with him. He's going to need a big year if he wants a contract extension in 2020. And he's also on thin ice, I would say, as well. Also, you got to figure out the situation at cornerback, too, with Prince of Mukamara. you got Te- Kevin Tolliver. You've got some really, really good free agent cornerbacks that you can sign. And I also think you got to figure out the strong safety position to move Eddie Jackson back to free safety. Jackson was dominant, He and I think the difference this year 
to last year with Eddie Jackson. He was still great this year. I think he still had a really solid year. But I believe that the switching of positions caused Jackson to be less effective as far as takeaways go in 2019. With Haas' uh, free agency approaching, I, I think it would be a safe idea for Ryan Pace to move Bojack back to safety, to free safety, and just look at some other options. There's going to be some intriguing options out there. I know Anthony Harris from the Vikings is one. Uh, Von Bell is another one that I posted about. There are some small issues on defense that may be able to be overlooked. Obviously, a majority of this offseason needs to be dedicated to the to the offense, whether it be draft or free agency. I'm excited to see how everything plays out. I'm here along for the ride, and I'm back making podcasts. So I'm going to get the other co-hosts on here soon. We're going to be grinding once again. We're really excited for what the future holds, getting into free agency and draft coverage. And I'm just excited to make specific videos again so I can give more of my in-depth thoughts and coverage on specific things. Once again, thank you guys for tuning in, whether you're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube. Do me a favor and subscribe or follow as we're going to be pumping out a ton of content multiple times a week for the rest of the offseason. We're really excited for what the future holds, and we really want to try and put a concerted effort into growing this podcast over the offseason. My name is Chris. If you do not follow my Bears fan page, you can do that on Instagram at News. You can also follow the podcast on Twitter and Instagram at Bear Down. That'll pretty much do it for me, guys. Do me a favor and comment below your thoughts on the Bear season and how we can improve moving forward. And thank you guys for tuning in. Stay positive, Chicago. I've, I've kind of started to say that at the end of every episode, and uh, I, think it, I, think it, I think it sticks true. There's high expectations in this city, uh, a lot of negativity, a lot of negativity. But I think if we keep our head up, we're eventually going to get into a good place. And hopefully everyone will be happy. I have high expectations, but I'm going to keep my head up no matter what. So stay positive, Chicago, and always remember to bear down. Have a good night. Peace.